Well, hello and welcome to the garden. It's Amanda, the creative gardener, ready to show you another little garden tour. The garden changes so much over the seasons. I mean, we have the dry season and the rainy season, and I guess you could call the hurricane season. But anyway, so I thought I would sh give you an update. It's um, It's been raining quite heavily where at the beginning of the rainy season, We've had Brett pass us, Cindy went over to the north, and I think um, Don is the next one, the next named system. Oh, look at me, I've been watching a lot of the uh, videos. So um, yeah, the garden is just like blossoming because of the rain that it's had. So we're gonna go around, have a quick look. I'll highlight some plants. I'm really excited about some. So um, yeah, I'm gonna highlight a few plants. So this first one on my left here, I thought it was a, um, a sweet sop, but I was looking at these kind of buds and I was thinking they don't look like a sweet sop. This one looks like it's diseased in some way. Um, it's not opened up as it should. Anyway, it's guava. So I knew I had some seeds and I did dash them in the garden. But yeah, the leaves are very similar to the sweet sop. And so, um, but I am so pleased. Look how well it's grown, as you can see. And I have trimmed it back a bit. You can make tea from the leaves. So I did that when I thought it was um, sweet sop but I was pleased to know that you could make tea from the leaves. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the fruit. Look at the flowers, look how, look how pretty that is. They don't last very long, so by the end of the day, that will have died back, or be dying back. Um, anyway, so let's get a move on. So here's my little kind of trench, uh, a mini kind of swale, and it, the water runs from when it rains, the water runs from over there, which are my neighbors, and rushes down here. And so it was flooded last night. Here's my little bridge. And it goes on down and around to the well. So I'm gonna have to do some clearing up here, clearing up of some of the leaves, just to make sure that the path isn't obstructed. So um, I've been putting down uh, some of the fountain grass. When I cut it, I put it down on the paths because as you can see, um, they get very muddy and all those prints are Cole's paw prints and then he brings his paw prints into the house. Um, let's have a look here. We've got the Jamaican Aki growing here. Again, this is another plant I'm going to have to trim back. I've got about nine trees, um, nine Jamaican Aki trees at the we call it guinip, sorry, not the Jamaican Ackies, the Barbadian Ackies, they call it Ackies, we call it guinip in Jamaica. And um, this one, because it's near the house, it can grow to like 40, 50 feet, but obviously, well, not obviously, but I don't want it growing that tall. So we've got four here growing in a very compact space. We've got one here and another one here growing with my um, passion fruit and my tropical black sage which is a fully formed tree my um, tool that can cut all these branches it's missing a bolt so I've got to go and get a bolt I was um, chopping back some the river tamarind I'll, I'll point it out when we get to it but it's a very invasive plant and suddenly the bolt fell out into the <laughs> plants and has never been found and it will probably turn up when I'm looking at something totally different and I'll find the bolt but in the meantime I'm gonna have to get that and yeah look at the Dracania I think it's called um, I wanted to see how tall it can grow and it is maybe 20 feet say um, but now we're in the rainy season I'm going to be cutting back and planting some of these um, putting the cuttings around the garden in front of say the hedge so it's like a double barrier 
So we've got some more, another three. I'll call, keep calling it Gillip because that's what I know it as, but you know, the ba ba Bajans call it Aki. Um, so we've got another three, but again, I wanna um, trim them, keep them at a certain height. Otherwise we'll invite the monkeys to uh, come and dwell in the garden. Um, and the leaves can be used in a tea, um, I think in a tea, I'll have to double check. I haven't used it in a tea yet, but it's supposed to be a deterrent to insects. So you can put it in your cupboards and things like that, just like you can do with the bay leaf. So this area, this is what I wanted to happen. I wanted a hedge here. We had had, um, I had just had the tires and they had aloes in it but I just wanted to separate that side of the garden um, which is more enclosed to this side and they've grown really nicely and started to flower it's amazing so this is going to produce oh you see a wasp in action there this is going to produce orange uh, fruit um, and in each orange fruit this small and round and um, they come in a cluster but with each orange fruit it has about three to five seeds in so all I've been doing is just keeping it trimmed and then we've got the pride of Barbados here with a canopy of moringa this is the largest tree and it, it's continuing to grow and I have to um, cut it back I have to trim it so that, I mean, I just allow it to grow for the birds. Look at the roots, you see them there. And it also goes across there and look down there. <laughs> so it's a very large tree. So yeah, I just allow it to grow like this for the birds. I don't collect the leaves or the pods. Um, the parakeets get the seeds in the pods and then the birds, they don't use it to nest in, but they congregate with this one. And then I've got one at the back, which you may have seen in a previous video. But yeah, I like this time of year when everything just kind of, we have a burst of growth. It can be an overwhelming feeling because I'm trying to maintain it and to keep it. Um, and things like this, like this is my quadrilla, quadrilla indica. So you can see, um, these are the pods. It, it's a fragrant plant, it has beautiful fragrant flowers. And then these pods form and then they split open like that, a lovely red interior. I think it's um, a family of the capsicum, but it's again, if, if you have any information on this particular plant, then I would, you know, be very grateful if you share that. Um, I've not found anything about its uses um, at all. Uh, you can see a flower back there. See, so pretty. But then some of the seeds drop, the birds eat what they want, and I've got a whole host of small little plants there and they've just been popping up around the garden wherever the i do have a lot of birds in the garden and um they really enjoy their time here and we have several several um we have several building their nests so this is the clama cherry and look at all the fruit um at the beginning of the dry season it dropped all its leaves and the result is down there and I thought um, there was something wrong you know um, it dropped all its leaves every single tree that I had I've got three clama cherry trees and they all dropped their leaves but this year I've never seen so many fruit and it's grown very wild so I was saying in my previous video that I've got to make a cut just here this will open up this whole area and allow some light in. Um, but I just need to keep it at a reasonable length. And you can see how it's grown, like how 
and then it's half of it's over on the neighbour's garden and then the trunk as it was growing half it starts over this side then it goes over to his side and then comes back um, but yeah these fruit so I am definitely gonna try and make you can make a jam from them and see what other uses I've got I can you know try out my apple blossom tree so as I say everything is just you know really coming into its own my Suriname cherry it had flowers a few months ago and I was hopeful that I was gonna get some cherries but it's just like oh no more leaves have, have grown but who knows with the um, you know all the rain and it's you know quite warm as well um, we'll be seeing some fruit pop up okay so what else can I share my bay leaf plant which is hard to recognize between the this is another quadrilla indica and they've been popping up all over the garden so I decided just to leave them grow where they want like some of the main ones and um, so they're interspersed in between uh, the fruit trees um, this is the bay leaf which is looking very healthy um, I had found lots of tiny little seedlings bay leaf seedlings um, s some of them I tried moving some of them I put in pots and they just didn't like it <laughs> so they're no more um, but that's the main one I've got a couple others I've just left to grow where they decided to emerge and in here we have the this is known as the vix plant that's not it's obviously um proper name uh, lat uh, latin name and we've got turmeric growing here we've got a passion it's a yellow passion fruit plant there and we've got mango this one was also flowering and I'm just hopeful I was just like I was sure that come September we would have even if it's just like three mangoes on here if not more because it was kind of pushing out the flowers it did it three times and they died back um, under the shade of the apple blossom tree the weary traveler <laughs> made her way along the paths so we've got um, another things are emerging from the from the ground look at that it's just like in all these months this is um, what a tiler would use to separate the tiles I found china like broken china emerging from the soil as the soil washes away um, you know, the rains very heavily. More quadrilla indica, some tropical black sage here. I've got another mango tree. There's um, three in this corner. And yeah, I'm still trimming them. That one looks like it's gonna flower from this. And that's where the uh, organic farmer is, was. We've got, um, oh my gosh, mahogany there. That's a small plant. I was going to try and move it. Um, I just need the right tools so that I can put it in a space that's got more, um, a, a, it's got more space basically. I'll probably put it out at the front of the garden. I don't want it growing really big here. Um, so when we look at this section, I really do... This is a section that had the most work on it and the plants are coming up. I've trimmed back, experimented and I think I've got the, um, that's my five fingered fruit there. Um, I think I've got the fruit trees that I want growing here for now. Um, three mangoes, the, the Suriname cherry, the five fingered fruit. You've got bay leaf and then other plants which can be used in tea, the tropical black sage. 
even the pomegranate this uh, pomegranate is finely growing this one produces dark deep red fruit and I've been nursing this to try and make sure that it grows to its fullest extent okay so the next section that's been doing well is my garden bags they're from um, I think I got them did I get them in Ikea and we've got some tarp for uh, the tarp down there was being used to cover some areas and to cover I had a little table and tires there but the termites just got to it um, and then we've got this section which is there's a lot of aloes we've got a lot of aloes growing in the garden I counted um, over 300 plants which is just like mind-blowing but they just continue to produce baby pups and so I take them I move them like I'd moved some here and they're growing and pushing look at all the all the baby pups behind them and then I did the same here I took some of the babies and put them along I decided to put them along all around the edge of the garden it's just like a border because there was nowhere else I could put them um, as you see a lot of plants I've just allowed to stay together and I just moved the smaller ones um, I might have to move that there's a there's a pineapple growing there and the henna we've got here and my Do you recognize this? It's a ground provision. Oh my gosh, it slipped my mind anyway. I've talked about it before, and if I remember, I will tell you. Pine uh, coconut there growing. I managed to get a sapodilla plant, and that's. Um, let's go and have a look. Um, it begins with a C. Oh my gosh. Lemon. Lemon. It's doing quite well. See the uh, leaves. Oh my gosh. It's such a beautiful lemon scent. And I use that in tea as well. Um, let's go and see the sapodilla. Good call. <laughs> um, I'm not sure whether it's going to fruit this year. Um, it's probably about... I think I've had it for two years. Um, I didn't plant it from seed. So I think it might be. And it's interesting the way that it's grown. And I use this in tea as well, the leaves. Um, and I just keep it trimmed. Um, I forgot to show you the curry leaf plant that's grown quite well. Oh, and uh, I was given... Um, dragon fruit and it's really grown very well and I've taken some cuttings from it and I've put them in different places I'll show you how they've been growing so this is my um, curry leaf and it was under attack at one point I have to come back in yeah no it's clear at the moment it was under attack or is it? I'm going to have to come and spray it with some neem. But when you spray, it seems to do, yeah, um, as a preventative as well as, you know, you don't want to wait until it gets so crowded with, I had lots of black fly um, and maybe some white fly. Yeah, I can see some action on here, so I'm going to have to... I can see quite a lot of action. What's going on, guys? <laughs> can you see them? Oh, my days. Um, we've got the can canistel, and I'm not sure why the leaves are turning brown. Um, I had scattered some, some salts in the area, so I may have been too over heavy handed. Um, so I split up some of the dragon fruit and I put this one here so that it could have some support. And then I realized that you know, in the desert, wherever they normally grow, um, they grow without a stake. So I've put another one over here and that's grown weirdly. 
when it's growing it's just like maybe shocked that it's in the soil um because it was in a pot and then i took a cut in those are aerial roots that you can see coming out and um the bit that's growing on the end it's got a lot more spikes if they go into your finger it really does hurt um i didn't realize at first and uh got pricked with the spines and they're very fine um what else can i show you i've got um a lot of the quadrilla indica that i mentioned earlier like all of these these little ones I've got to move all of them and they're all under here as well let's just move this way this is um, quadrilla indica and then we've got all of the little plantlets underneath look at that it's on the rock it's a lizard it's a different variety of lizard that we have. We have several different varieties of lizard in the garden. This is a prickly pear and around it I've placed some wire wool. Um, I think it was the smaller snails that were getting to it and maybe the slugs. Um, so I thought I would try that as a deterrent. I've been trying everything else. Um, but they seem to really like the uh, prickly pear. It uh, seems to be a, a delicacy to them. Um, and I've got some more. I've got another one here that is grown nicely. And I've just put around it the wire wool there. And here's some more dragon fruit. So I'm just going to see how they go. I've still got some more in plants and um, I can take uh, cuttings. It's quite easy to take cuttings. You take a cutting at a joint, you allow it to dry and then you can plant it. So I'm going to have to trim back the, this is a quadrilla indica again with its pods. We don't want any more pods dropping here. I thought I would put some more fruit bearing plants in this section um, and uh, as we move swiftly we've got plantain which is growing I've had to really nurse this because it looks touch and go at one point but it's pushing out some leaves I think the ants had in when it was really dry they had built a nest and the plant starts to kind of look sick um, and kind of wilt and that, that's what this one was doing so um, yeah I've been on it with making sure that it got adequate water and uh, it seems to be responding but yeah these ants they just find their way and build nests even in pots I've had to you know I've just watered one watered a pot and they've just kind of all come scurrying out with their um, young the eggs it's cool <laughs> just, he went to see his friends <laughs> so by the well we have more aloes growing um, because this isn't a deep it doesn't have deep roots um, I put these here and again in this section this was a section I showed in a previous video that I'm going to be growing um, sort of like you know okra um, um, pumpkin squash we've got one here and we've got a snail there that looks like it would be munching on the leaves got quite a few in here so I'm just gonna pick it up and move it yeah, so I've just been covering this area and um, when I'm ready, I've been scattering some seeds but the snails have been getting at them. Um, so 
when I'm ready, I'm going to add some soil. Um, I'm just keeping adding, you know, when I do chop and drop, the Mexican sunflower is growing really well. So I'm going to be chopping that back and then layering it here. And then that just dies down and it's going to provide an environment where, you know, this, it, the soil becomes rich. There was soil here. I put a layer of cardboard and I've just pinned chopping and allowing things to break down in this area and then we've got the rest of the garden that's everything's very green um, again because of the rain let's see the banana tree well it's not a tree technically but it's pushing out yeah grass is going to need to be cut in the next week or so but yeah look at that and then the baby growing beside it we've got some more Mexican sunflower growing really well and then we've got more aloe plants oops <laughs> sorry I was so careful aloes plants along here what I've got to do um, what I've got to do the next time I'm out this week is to just trim back the grass in front of the plants so I've got aloes growing all along here as well and yeah the rest of the uh, garden's looking well um, as I say the more rain we get the more things like the broadleaf thyme and all the other plants need to be trimmed back this is my <sighs> sour sub tree and it's got some fruit on it look at that so I have to be um, mindful about the pests so there was a pest I noticed on this one you can see some white stuff it's like this white fluffy um, but there's insects in there and so I sprayed it with some neem oil and some soapy water and it's doing well and then I put these little <laughs> things on there for the monkeys because the last time oh look you can see even more clearer can you see it clearer yeah but I've got to come back and spray it um, but the monkeys there was a big one growing at the bottom and they took one bite and left it and obviously you know you're not going to eat it after the monkey's been at it so I just took the seeds out and replanted them so I think um, I'm gonna have to do another little update for the front we've got some nice plants growing in the front I didn't want to make the video too long but I wanted to give you kind of a feel for things at the moment especially as you know it's it's at the start of the rainy season and the plants are just like yeah we got lots of water this is a um, River Tamarind, the one that I was telling you about, it's quite invasive. So all of those little brown things you can see are, are seeds and it's got about eight to ten seeds in there. And as they blow, they then get everywhere. And I've been picking them out. In some places I've left them. Like I left them at the front of the space here because I'm aiming to just keep them low of pretty much like this one I still have to cut this one back um, so I'm just going to keep it up to there and then it also becomes you know part of the we've got the deadwood hedge a deadwood hedge and a broadleaf thyme hedge um, but it gives you you know some separation um, so I'm keeping them at a certain height this one I've just not had the tools I need to cut these back as well so these are all going to be cut back so that they'll just grow at this height 
that's going to be the guide and that is the um, tropical black sage that's growing there and that's just growing kind of wild and I've got some a cotton plant as well on the other side that's just kind of trying to take over to an extent but um yeah this is the garden so far and it's all coming on and it's 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 something that um you know I have to I come out every day and I spend a couple of hours doing different things um warring with the slugs and the snails and then just keeping an eye on the plants cutting them back seeing which plants need to be uh not necessarily moved but cut back and um planted in a different spot in this area i was trying to what i'm trying to do is just keep the grass down at the back there and i'm going to plant flowers here i just wanted this you know a set of wild flowers to then grow in this area so i thought that would be interesting to have that um that would be nice i've got some um, I've just got a packet of mixed seeds that I brought. In the back there we've got um, Pride of Barbados. So that's going to be a yellow. We've got the yellow of the Mexican sunflower and part deadwood hedge. Because when I chop and drop with the large branches, I'll just place them in there. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're going to have flowers there. And I'm going to have to trim the... No need. I need to just trim it there. And then I've got some, look, I don't know whether it's the birds or a rat. I've seen some rats around um, biting, look, half of it's been bitten. So what I need to do is um, get these off. I've got some jars and I want to ferment some. Um, the noni is good for boosting the immune system. I often drink the leaves um, to make make tea from the leaves, and I think I'll probably take you. Thank you very much. So I just um, break this up and make some tea with it. Um, green tea. I'll use. Uh, the bay leaf and maybe some rosemary, the neem, We've got some seeds, loads of seeds. This is uh, one of my proudest accomplishments. I've always wanted to grow neem and I grew it from seed and they've been, it's been growing beautifully. Um, as is all the plants, <laughs> just in case they hear me. Um, and uh, I've got another neem tree and then of course obviously with the seeds they drop and we've got some baby plants growing I did say I was going to finish soon but um, some more um, guinip sorry yeah guinip Jamaican Barbadian Bajan Aki well, I think this is two yeah and then I've got another one. See, I've got another one at the front that I've said can grow to its full extent, but these ones I don't want, I'm gonna have to trim them again because this is too near the well. And I've got another one just along the side here that I've been debating with as to whether it can grow full size. This one. So we'll see, because it does then create a lot of shade. Um, but I think, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that to grow and then we'll just keep trimming it. So that's the garden for now. I hope you've enjoyed the tour and coming round with me. Um, if there are any plants you saw that you wanted, that you wanted to ask any questions about, you know please do leave a comment let me know where you're watching from and um, what you're growing you know we we don't all have large spaces to grow um, but even if we can grow in a pot we can be semi self-sufficient and um, provide something 
um, nutritious for our family and uh, and also to have things around you that are pretty like one of the the main things that I wanted was to have fragrance in the garden and we're coming to the end of this the uh, giant crinium lily um, but it the beautiful it's a deep beautiful fragrance I wish I could capture it um, I will maybe think about doing that uh, soaking it the flowers in oil and uh, see if I can transfer some of the scent but it is a beautiful deep rich scent that you get so you take care for now and I hope to to speak to you soon but um, I will see you again in the next video